Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Toothbrush. Uh, we're gonna continue with the conversation that we had about renderings. But before we start, I did want to say something uh, because we used last, on the last episode, we said something about um, style. But we were talking about renderings, yeah. right? Yeah, and we left on what, you know, on yourself because, you know, we started talking about how you learned um, rendering in, in Revit. But I know that right. you had a good history and a good reputation that Janera was the Rhino guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. And that's basically because I started learning. Yeah, how, how do you, so you beat, I don't want to say betrayed Revit, but how did you cross yeah. over? So I crossed over because of fabrication. Mm -hmm. uh, someone said you can start building things and you can start uh, using this program to uh, find ways and into creating groups and then you can start making furniture and then you can start doing these things. And then they're, they're came in and said, there's also 3d printing and there's like CNC in machine. And I was like, I want to do all those things. So they're mm -hmm. like, but you got to use Rhino. And I was like, I'm really bad at Rhino. Yeah. So, and, and then they were like, but then you can use it for design, uh, studio. And I was like, all right, I, I'll let me, let me learn a little bit. And mm -hmm. They were having, what, what was it? Some workshop classes Saturdays at eight in the morning from eight to like noon. And I was like, oh my God, this is horrible, but let me go. And it was a very specific class <laughs> where they were teaching people how to use Rhino and yeah. teaching them how to use uh, 3D printing. And I was like, let's, let's do it. And for mm -hmm. like literally the whole semester, I was in school Saturdays learning how to use Rhino. Yeah. And through the print and CNC and and I was like I was like it was another class, yeah. But I, I got to use Rhino pretty well and I started learning how to use all those commands and doing extrusions and I became very very proficient. That how's once... that feeling? That how's that feeling? Because I know that you kind of getting up on Saturday and you're like, ah, fine, I'll go away. But then you you come out of the school and you learn something new. How's that feeling knowing that? Uh, in a way, oh. you, you are a little step ahead because you went you went and learned something new. I think I think just learning something new was very gratifying. I never thought about it as uh, stepping up or stepping uh, being a step ahead. I was just like, I want to do it. I want to learn it, and if I don't learn it, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that free time. So I was like, mm -hmm. might as well let me just go, and and I'm probably gonna get something out of it, mm -hmm. and then not do it. So I was like, I've always been a little bit like that. But let's just give it a try. If it doesn't yeah. work, what's the worst that can happen? I don't like it. No, uh, I, I probably have more of a competitive um, thought, but I'm like, if I was me, okay, yes, the hardest part is getting to school at 8 a.m. on Saturday. That's like yeah. no doubt about it. But then <laughs> coming out of school, I would feel super good because I'm like, I feel like I'm ahead of something. I'm, I feel like, uh, okay, I have more tools on my palette to to get to the point because that's the point. Like you, you want to become more efficient. You want to create things faster. Um, yep. You want to create the fastest renderings, but the best way, you know, or yeah. yeah. No, 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 I totally, I, I, I agree with that portion of, of the competitiveness. I, I've been always very competitive. Uh, mm -hmm. Mainly I was like, I want to show that I can do it. And I want to show people that I, I have that ability, mm -hmm. but it was kind of like the, the afterthought always it has always been like let me just try it out mm -hmm. that not nothing's gonna hurt if i try it out and and then I, I try it out and i get obsessed or i'm like let me just keep doing it now i'm now i have the tools yeah. uh, and so that's something i, I really did enjoy going into class because then a bunch of people tried doing it mm -hmm. and learned how to do it so i said yes let's let's learn together yeah it was hard Definitely no, no doubt about waking up like at six in the morning on a Saturday. Yeah. But also that gave me exposure and meeting people on Saturdays where no one was in school. I was, I became friends with, uh, the CNC people, the laser cutters, uh, the people who sold food downstairs. I became friends with all of them, <laughs> uh, which that's going to be another story because, uh, people knew that I was gifting sandwiches at noon on Saturdays, but that's, that's going to be another story. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you learn Rhino and 
you basically uh, knew enough Revit to use it in, in design. Did you yep. go back to design and how do you determine, okay, maybe I should use Rhino for this project or maybe I should give it a try or so should it, I just it, it use really, Revit? Yeah, I think it really depends on what my, my feeling was at the time. Also how mm. curvy I wanted a project to be. Uh, or how fast I needed to develop an idea. So if I needed to develop an idea very quickly, I would just do it in Rhino and just mm -hmm. come up with something quick, do a bunch of extrusions and like start figuring it out that way. But yeah. other times I was like, I need sections. I need floor plans. I need all of this. So let me build a good portion of it in Revit and then mm -hmm. let me do like the crazy facade or whatever, bring it into I mean, in Rhino and do it, bring it into Revit, get the sections. And then from there, work out ways into making a good rendering and yep. then finishing it up in post-production. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know if, if I was just trying to find enough reasons not to use Rhino, uh, because I did feel like if you went, went to Rhino, you'll do a sweep, you know, you do something and you, you do a command and something happens and that's that was my logic back in the day and then you have your design i'm like this is me thinking back in in college and city tech what how, where's the creative you know how do how do you become creative uh, you know does your sketch match your rhino project like i want to see that I part think, yeah you i know. think that i think that's where me, many people kind of had a, a, a problem because then they started to just figuring things out on the computer versus yeah. starting to think about the actual process and, and figuring it out on their head and paper Yeah. than, than on the computer. So because I, I did come across that challenge that I think I mentioned in a previous video uh, recording where, you know, everyone was uh, recommended, okay, create your drawing, create your, your schematic and just do it, sketch it out. Uh, but no, you cannot use Revit. You cannot use Revit. And then I'm like, why? And then and, and I would see people use uh, Rhino in that form. Okay, let me create a shape in, in Rhino. Let me pull it out. Let me put points, pull the points up, make it, like you said, I want to work with a curvature and like Sazahadi and like do all these things. But I'm like, wait, why is that not? why is it not in your sketchbook? Why is it not in your concept model? And and I'm like, I would brought it to the teacher, to the, the professor and say, hey, look, this is my sketch. This is what I have sketched. And this is what I actually uh, trespass into Revit. You know, they match. Mm -hmm. You know, I've already passed the creative phase, if you want to put it that way. Yeah, now nice production. It, yeah, and then now it's like making the real thing, I think they mentioned, um, why can I not work? And then, yeah, uh, like, and I yeah, think that's where you can do that. You're, um, you're allowed to, and so yeah. Like... yeah, no, and it's because you got to go through a think, uh, thinking process, and many people didn't do that, and that's where the program becomes it becomes detrimental for use and, and creativity. And, and honestly, many people from City Tech, their main effort in having an education was not to become creative, was not to to learn a theory behind the, uh, things, mm -hmm. but it was just to get a job. Yep, yeah. So those are also different sensibilities and professors are there to teach you to be creative, to think outside the box and to have um, a set of tools, Yeah. whether you don't know how and, to use a program or not. And I'm not against that, that thought either because I feel like a lot of the obstacles, even I, even to my career, right? I feel like uh, my first year, I'm like, okay, people are playing catch up. Let me focus on making money. I think in the back of my mind, that um, many people is like, how how is this gonna complement me in like making money? Like, I yeah. want no, money. and 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 staying back in track with uh, what we spoke on the previous. Uh, show and and keeping the conversation on how we learn these programs so by knowing all those tools and having all those abilities you could start already um advertising yourself 
that you knew how to use Revit, you knew how to use Rhino, or you knew how to do rudimentary or pretty good renderings. Mm -hmm. And then someone would hire you. Like I got hired just to do renderings by like architects. And I was just like- That was my next question. <laughs> All right. Like, what, what, no, if, like you said, like how how uh, how did that come about? Like, okay, you, this is something that I got so good at rendering. Uh, now I can start charging. Like, what made you think about that, or was it brought to the table to you, or you brought the brought the offer to someone else? Yeah, and I think this is where you start becoming also a little bit of a salesperson as well. And and I think you and I have been a little bit able to do so. But you start just telling people like, yeah, I've done this. I know how to use this program. And, and then they're like, oh, I might need some help. And you're like, yeah, just uh, we can work out a payment. Or like, you, how much can you, can you, I can help you out? Do you need help? Mm -hmm. And then they give you like a price. And at that time, like, I was like, just give me some money that I can pay my 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 basic necessities. And I'm down. I'm game. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, and I would just like start proposing and telling like professors like, oh, I know how to do this. And some professors will be like, oh, I know a person I can, might need your help. Did that, did that kind of like, um, I don't want to call it cheat your mind, but you're like, okay, I'm making money for a project, a real project that's being filed to the city. And then they're using my rendering to sell the real project, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, did that kind of like open your eyes and say, well, this is simple, like, like if i i can do it one time what if i do it multiple times like yeah and actually that is one of the biggest problems at least for me mm -hmm. because once i see a name mm -hmm. i'm like i can do this a couple of other times and then i find ways into putting myself out there and getting more things and then keep pushing it and keep working and keep hustling if that's the word that we want to use in this case that i get burned out and I get too exhausted that I'm like, all right, I did enough. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's a good segment into, okay, organization, right? Mm -hmm. Because one thing is creating something. Okay. Can you, t are you able to teach that? Are you able to make a system where it won't, I want to duplicate uh, an image with the same uh, color tone, the same brightness, the same exposure? Did, did you write stuff down? Did you save things? Because, um, yeah. No, no, I, I, I definitely, I was going to say, I definitely do appreciate the, the question. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, that's but honestly. 50, that's 50 bucks, by the way. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. I, I was going to say, yes, uh, at the beginning, you don't, you don't write things down and you aren't that organized because you already don't really know how to work anything out and you don't have like a like a person or like a mentor that can be like oh you you organize things in a way that makes sense to you and you don't have a foldering system you know the foldering system is like finish done 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 final 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 done so you're what, just like, what, was that your flash drive like final, <laughs> that, that was basically, that final, was basically my final 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 <laughs> yeah so that's not a way to of like labeling things and and at that time it was just and it's still at this time it's wrong you should be able to to have information well organized yeah but at that time you're like all right I, i'm not really keeping track of things and like formats so i wasn't doing it very well but then i was saving the files mm -hmm. and if i needed something very similar what i would do is just use make a copy of that file Mm -hmm. and then bring a new picture so then I could work out mm -hmm. some of the previous magic that I had worked till like it worked to the new rendering. Yeah. Which is not the best part, but now as, as a working professional, you understand that in order to keep consistency, you need to keep writing the same elements like a recipe. You have to make sure that the system works mm -hmm. in, in any different uh, scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, if I want to think about organization, I think it didn't come from like myself. Well, I think it, like no. everything else, it came from inspiration. I remember that I got my, from one, inspiration, like from internships, because like I would go into an office. One of my <laughs> first internships was basically corporate and 
and I went inside and I, I observed everyone, you know, everyone, professionals, how they wrote, what pencils they used. And then I was exposed to a project and I'm like, wait, there's an archive folder. Um, I'm like, yep. why do, we, do you want an archive folder inside the project folder? And then, you know, you begin, okay, when is there to create a folder? Uh, because there's, there's, there's signs, like even to create a folder, right? You can have different files, like a PDF, you can have a, a CAD, you can have a Revit, Rhino, 3D Max. But when you start having a lot and you need to kind of be more clear, um, you want to break it up into files, right? Um, sometimes there's cases that you don't, but there's cases that you do. But it all depends yep. on on the on the project. How do you make things obvious for whoever, whoever's going into the project folder? Yep. Um, and actually, that's one of the things that I still follow to this date, uh, especially mm -hmm. because I said in case, and this is kind of becomes a little bit of a, of a very graphic uh, example that I give people. I'm like, what if I go out today and go get lunch and then I don't look uh, when I'm crossing the street and I get hit by a car, then <laughs> no one, no one's going to like work on my project. No, they yeah. got to. So yeah. I keep things organized that whoever works on my uh, project while I'm in the hospital yeah. can just start. <laughs> you mean you're not going to work in the hospital? Yeah, no. You as shocking as that is. You mean you're not going to take your laptop <laughs> and just use your one finger? Yeah, my one finger. Hey, this one works. All right. Um, and that's that's what I tell people. It, it, yeah. it's, it's a joke. It's a little bit of a visual joke. But yes, um, you have to make things uh, easy for anyone to jump in and learn and follow your thinking process. Yeah. So you... You give them that opportunity in case yeah. you're not no longer there as either as an employee or as mm -hmm. something taking a vacation, whatever. Right. But yes, uh, with that, it, like you said, it doesn't come easy. You, you don't. You're not born. No. Uh, organized. <laughs> I think yeah. that's the thing that humans. It's a good human invention. Organization. Yeah. In in, in it, it's like what do you bring to your palate, right? And so. In this transition, when I was observing, because I was being very observant of business designers and like, wait, they use this or this pro person does not use Rhino. This person only use CAD. How is it possible? You know, mm -hmm. we're like, you're like, for me at the point at that time, it's like, okay, like you said, like in the beginning of the, the previous um, part one where you build a style, like everyone has a different style. And you're like, at that point, you're like, whoa, like. I felt overwhelmed because I'm like, I love Revit. I learned 3D Max. I feel better doing 3D Max because I feel it's more of a rare project, a uh, rare software. I'm like, I feel more, I feel better in a way. <laughs> right. uh, yeah. And, but then I'm like, wait, Revit at the time was coming up. Everyone, Revit was like the, the topic. Okay. You went to a, a office. I hope you know Revit because that's the next big thing. Um, right. But even today, like there's still offices that still use only can. That's only yeah. thing they use. Yeah. Um, but the point I was getting to is that all the stuff that I was learning in these offices and internships, I was still in school and I was bringing it back to my projects where I, in my flash drives, in, in my Dropbox, I was already creating this template of organization. So I started stacking up on my... Uh, what do you call it? Families, Revit families. Right. Um, I got exposed to, for example, that manufacturers already at the time, because now there's more, they were creating, if it was a toilet, they were creating a toilet or um, 2D model, and you didn't have to go to Revit City anymore. You're like, wait, mm -hmm. find my favorite uh, refrigerator for my project, Baj or Mealy, and I bring it in and like, I don't have to model it anymore. I just have to move things around, you know? Yeah, you um, can call the company and just be like, dude, I need this. Um, your, your, what, your appliance is already like $6,000. Yeah. Can you yeah. help me on this one? Yeah, the only thing I was doing custom was uh, probably the cabinets, you know, mm -hmm. where the hinges go and like the handles. I'm like, this is like so good. Like, what if I come with a style of, of cabinets? I'll save as and save for a future project. And that's how I thought about renderings too. It's like, I started saving uh, materials. I'm like, I like kind of like this style of uh, Photoshop. So I will save as, I'll do like style one, style two, style three. 
And then I remember I had the styles memorized where I had a new project. Uh, and so I would open the old one, replace the, the photo and kind of just tweak a little bit. Yep. And That's I had the, yeah, and I had the the view I wanted. And I'm like, well, like I didn't have to yeah. do this model again and again. Yeah, so that's that's what experience gives you, and that's what uh, it's one of the best and most interesting part about it that we don't pay attention in school because we're so preoccupied with the design and this and which is amazing. But to make things faster and easier for the future, you're like, oh, you know what? I could have just created a couple of folders that can be added yeah. in a day and 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 expanded upon the need of the project. But in that same sense, uh, by using, uh, when I stopped using just Rhino and, and Revit, I started becoming very fluent into using both at the same time. Mm -hmm. But my renderings were getting a lot better, very more realistic. I was able to learn how to scale people accordingly, like we had spoken in right. the previous uh, episode. And things were looking very good. I was able to show shadows like make shadows on yeah. my own and yeah and i actually um, want to but, talk about that people so how did you like how did you uh like drop in a person into a, one of your views like what was your way like what was your style saying okay i'm gonna choose this person um i'm gonna scale it to this perspective or how was your yeah yeah, my my uh <laughs> my scaling uh, and my choosing of people depend on on what was the project right and you you were not going to put a you were rendering something and your base image was uh winter and no trees outside you mm -hmm. of course you were not going to put a person yeah uh in short sleeves or, or stuff like that uh so you were going to go and look for pictures of people mm -hmm. and then find groups so they can like be looking up your up to the building that you design or whatever so you will start uh, populating those things yeah. um you I, I mean in this case i would add a bunch of different people walking towards it uh coming out of the building or out yeah. of the piece of architecture then just populating it like that it's a little sporadically so it seems like it was a lively street mm -hmm. i'd actually had a piece or a couple of like birds flying in the distance just because it, it adds like that's how you always see birds for some reason everywhere Mm -hmm. <laughs> you forgot the and, glare. But the wait, glare. no, no, that, that that's that's that, that's gonna be the last thing because oh, that's the cherry on top. That's the cherry on top because I was gonna say once uh, you start like using and like populating things, and you already become a little bit better at using the program, then you add a little bit of plants. You are like a piece of like tree in the corner that hides mm. a like a building that it's there that you don't like. So yeah. you just put a piece of like tree. Mm -hmm. And then you start like thinking about like, what's the mood of this picture? And then you're like, I don't like it that it's blue. So let me start adding patches of orange or uh, like in my case, I became a little bit more kind of eccentric in that sense. So I was using purple and pink and green and just kind of like making the mood a little bit more, uh, <laughs> more like that, that it had colors or like vibrancy. Yeah. And when I had selected all of those different colorations and tones, I was able to just select which glare I wanted it and then like match <laughs> it to the hue of yeah. the tonality that I had on yeah. on the image. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and and some people didn't like the fact that I use more vibrant colors like purple or pink or green to enhance my picture. But I was like, it's my my style. That's what I want to show. And you yeah. might not like it, but I don't give a shit. No. Um, maybe, maybe you can, um, I don't know if you have time, but at the end, when we don't have any credits, but maybe this episode we have a couple of credits where you show some of your views <laughs> or you, if time allows. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, actually, let me see, because I think I have one. Okay. Two pictures. But uh, while, I, while I'm looking for those, uh, you also had, like, what was your progress or processing to do in those? into adding your renderings so there was one that i i only use for example i had different styles like um if it was a section mm -hmm. like i had the dark poche on the bottom like the ground and like kind of 
the pole shape uh-huh. leading to the building to create the thick wa- walls. I feel like there, I didn't want to use, I did create a, like a rendering type of that and I didn't use real people. I use like silhouettes. Which um, is better. I, I, yeah. I... Just to give scale to the image. Um, one thing I did hate about seeing in other renderings where they grabbed this uh, poche image of a person and they put into like a regular, regular re- rendering. Um, that annoyed me at like, it was little things that annoyed my eye. I'm like, why they just hurt their whole design. Um, yep. uh, and then there was times where I used realistic people, the same thing organization. I just had a, uh, a, a Photoshop file full of people ready to just copy and paste. So they're already cleaned ah. up. Yeah. So the, the people were clean. Like I just needed to grab the woman that was sitting. I just had, had a, a one with the pet, one with the group, one looking down, one looking up different expressions of, because, you know, we had different type of project where with museums, it was residentials. Um, so th- like you said, depend on the mood. Um, I think with the trees, oh yeah, before I move on to the trees, the people, there was times where I felt like I needed to blur them out. Um, I, think I feel like, uh, Either the, the, the people were too good for the, the design where I'm like, they're distracting to the eye and I just need, okay, I just need you to be there, but you, your color. So let me blur you out a little bit. So I, I would blur the people out. Be shapeless, uh, be, be nameless basically. Yeah. But you still nice. see it. You still see a shadow, but it's basically blurred out. Um, oh, that's nice. That's, that's... Yeah. And then that, that was your most like the most part of your system and that was what took the longest right uh well actually i already had thought about it <laughs> so in <inside laughs> the photoshop file i had a blurred version in a realistic non-blurred version so the blurredness already was created so it I was, was just a matter of like applying it <laughs> yeah so again i i just found ways i don't want to say that i was trying to skip time or skip steps but i was like let's do this and you know and actually i was making a joke the other day to someone they're like how are you so good at using this program at at an office i was like because i'm lazy (laughs) and they're like and they laughed and i was like i want to make shortcuts so i don't have to do this and repeat it yeah i i mean it's it's okay i think if if you don't know like there is a book to things I think that's yeah. like the, if you just stick to one style and like there's a book and you st- and that you're limited and like there's nothing you can do. I think that's lazy. But if you can be spontaneous and you're like, um, you can be creative at any point and like you can just grab the the program and run. I think that's that's okay. Mm-hmm. I don't think I don't count that as laziness. Um, mm-hmm. But then like the trees, plants, Revit did have trees. So if you did. They sucked. Yeah. Um, there was times where I, I didn't have enough time and, you know, in college or just running, if I didn't have enough time, I just left the trees in, in Revit and I just run the yeah. like that. But there was times where, um, I'm like, no, I need to put my, my trees in Photoshop. So I did have a file with plants, pine trees, um, maple trees, different type of trees. If it was in the forest, it was it depending on the project, because if you, you were doing in the city, you had different type of trees. You're not going to have pine trees in the city. Yeah. Um, so I, I had a file with cars, plants and people ready to use for any of you. <laughs> ready, ready for it. No, that's good. Let me share, let me share my, some of those things. I don't have, this is, these are extremely, extremely old, maybe like, you know, I don't know. What yeah. ten years old? Almost. I I don't. I'm I'm gonna apologize. I'm trying. I'm I'm gonna try to um find some and I'll let you post them. But uh, someone broke into my car where I had everything inside, and I think that could oh, be a po- that could be a an episode of how the cloud is affecting our industry. But that's a different stuff. Yeah. yeah. No, actually, that's true. Now, not, someone was saying that. Um, we, when we went to school, we always carry a flash drive. And now you tell a student, like, what's your flash drive? They're like, what is a flash drive? <laughs> they don't even, some of them, they don't even know what a flash drive I is. I hope not. <laughs> they, sometimes, sometimes, some, sometimes. Uh, yeah. Let me share my screen and see where is my, what actually what screen, because I have like three screens here. 
Uh, all right. So here it is. You guys let me know if you see it. Yep. Wow. So this is one of them. So this was design five, I think. I mean, I, I fixed that a little bit, but this was done in Rhino and Revit. Can I tell you my favorite part? What? The windows? <laughs> no, it's the, um, the texture on the, on the, on the wood. Uh, this, uh, yeah. or this one? No, on the wood, like uh, the, the wall going and becoming a ceiling. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was a whole panelization system that I had to create, but it, this is, this was model in Rhino, then brought into Revit, added floors and everything in Revit mm -hmm. and then render in Revit. And do was this, was, I feel like I know this layout. What, what, yeah. where, where is this like? Design five, uh, it was, uh, court, court street and Jay, I think, uh, or Adam and Jade or something like that. J street. Was it that, um, triangle looking shape? Yeah. Lot? Yeah. Okay. That, that was, that was, that was one. Yeah. That's where everyone had render. the shapes. <laughs> yeah. We couldn't do much. And like mine, so mine was basically. Uh, a coffee shop and a bookstore mm -hmm. because I, I, and I give it, I even gave a quote by Jorge Luis Borges, which in which he said his form of paradise would be a library. And mm -hmm. I was like, why don't, why don't we mix both? So that was, that was it. And you the wanna, inspiration was a coffee bean. Yeah. Some of the things, some of the things you want to um, just give me an overview, like what was created in, in Revit, what was actually modeled and what is actually just image in Photoshop. Okay. This is model. So like the books, all the books inside, of course, those were uh, Photoshop. The people mm -hmm. were Photoshopped. Uh, this whole portion was done in Rhino. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, in Rhino. The floors were Revit. The furniture was Revit uh, families, Revit, of course, and, and Revit. I just enhanced them in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. So the lighting, was the lighting if, if I don't recognize it good, that's the lighting from Revit, right? Because there was times where you, yeah. Yeah. yeah this I lighting I was okay with because I'm like, okay, it's fine if there's a lot of light coming from the exterior going in. This is the type of light that even like the shape hitting in the floor that I kind of appreciated in, in an image. Yeah, and that's where we got a little bit better. We were like, all right, let's give it a try. This one I had said a little bit, I think my last year, but it, it, it stayed the same pretty much throughout. Mm -hmm. I think that's the only picture that survived. I don't think I have anything else, to be honest. Oh. Uh, this is a rendering that I did for a project. Mm -hmm. So this was all done in Revit. Uh, I think the only thing that I did was add the picture on the outside from Photoshop, but then it was model and rendering and Revit. The the recess lights also the that glow it's in Revit. No, no, actually, actually, you're right. That's that's another thing. <laughs> that was Photoshop, but just to make it a little bit brighter. Yeah. That this also just the glow is in. Revit? This glow is in rep in in Photoshop, then everything else is Revit. That looks really clean. Yeah, no, it, it took me a while to figure that out. So everything was how Revit. Did you, um, how did you make the uh, this? Did you have to adjust the the lighting fixtures to get that um, good reflection on the walls? Because yeah, if the the light fixtures didn't have enough light, the dark the room looked dark. Like for example. I'm not using the first example you showed, but the, the lighting there was was low. May, may, mm -hmm. Part of it was more because there was sun coming in, but this one is like, I like this one a lot. No, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit hurt that you didn't like my first one. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, but uh, this, all of this was uh, Revit and Twig and all the lighting, the lumens and the wattage was all taken care of in Revit. So. Mm -hmm. There was a couple of trial and errors just to make sure that the lighting functioned. Mm -hmm. uh, no, because otherwise, great. doesn't work. Same, but just opposite view. So, mm -hmm. and it was a little bit more skewed, but also all Revit, just mm -hmm. the lighting. Just like I was telling you, that's kind of like it didn't have the flare, but I used this glow. Yeah. Just so enhancement. 
Yeah. Just a random picture of a project in that I did in Rhino that I like I literally modeled and rendered this in like I don't know, six hours. Rhino? Rhino, all in Rhino. Wow. So I had to render and this is one view, but I render like six, seven different renderings in like seven hours. See the the if I wanted to create a parallel on what I was trying to get in Revit, is the previous image you got, right? That's uh, That was always my goal. But the inspiration always came from like looking something from Rhino. I'm like, Revit, we need to be able to create uh, something that has good lighting that mm -hmm. Rhino creates. So that was always my yeah. goal, um, which I... The only thing I liked in Rhino at the time was that it created nice renderings in Revit. I'm like, once I, I create these um, looks and like the, the color tone and like the brightness in Revit, I don't have I don't have nothing to do in Rhino. But like you said, if we want a curvature, you create the, the, the facade in, in in Rhino and export it as a as a SAT, was it? Or um SAT, it was yeah. File. yeah. Yeah, I think we all used SAT because it was the only one that gave you the chance to change materials. But yeah, like yeah. in this one, you see, it was a project in Denver and someone sent us pictures of the outside and I just fixed and did this lounge area very quickly and I did a yeah. bunch of others. This was nice. maybe like, this is a rendering of like a office front, literally didn't take any anything. I think it took less than a day. To the model this and, and the, render. This is the quality I got from uh, DD Max. Yeah, and and sometimes it took longer than than a day to do it. Yeah. But also we were a little bit unexperienced back then. This other picture. Beautiful. This got built and it looks just as actually in real life it looks a lot better. I don't want it in real life. <laughs> <laughs> and that was very. No, that, that one was great. That the the one in the that was a big hall, big lobby. Yeah, wow. and it got built and it looks just the same and, and actually nicer. But then we have this one and it was just a couple of iterations for a pantry, which again, you just got to do it very quick. You see, and then some other random mm -hmm. quick renderings thing. But that's basically some of the quick, uh, on refined renderings that you just got to use to show something to a client and, and have it approved. Yeah. And nothing more than that. Yeah. I think that's, um, that's no, wait, I feel like we can go on forever. And I think the next step from this would be probably like where renderings have gone. Like, um, I feel like once you get to the limit where you, okay, you know that there's different workflows. I don't think there's in my perspective, what I've seen is like, I didn't have to learn anything more. I just had to go into a workflow. Okay, this is what we want to accomplish, and that's it. I already have all the tools, and it's just knowing your limits, knowing when to stop. Um, I think in the next episode we can kind of talk about how um, AI has it has been affecting uh, renderings because things are moving a lot quicker, um, and I yeah. feel like people can fall into the same trap as we we probably did. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're, we're getting an image that looks too realistic. Maybe we need to step back. Yeah, no, no, and actually that that's true. So yeah, rendering just became a three-part uh, <laughs> episode. No, it, I, I don't blame it. It's, it's because no, no, it's, it's, it, it is it's something It's one of those that, things. Yeah. No, no, anything I totally more? agree with you. Yeah, anything you ask for the, the audience? Any announcements? Any announcements? No, I don't have any announcements. Uh, I'm gonna be on tour next week. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. actually, and, um, and I think with that, uh, it's a good way to just end the episode and just tell everyone that it's been great talking about renderings, and we'll keep talking about renderings and and a little bit of everything <laughs> next episode. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. It never ends. And um, there's your. Right. Yep. Yeah, and actually, yes. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Have a great week, guys. Uh, stay yeah. safe and see you.